there is no getting around you're going to save a small fortune. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. And today I am going to talk to you about a question I was asked on one of my past Q&A videos. And this question came from my friend on Instagram, Perstopia, Candice at Perstopia. Now she has a fabulous Instagram page, which if you like things bright and shiny, like I do, you will love her page. So I'm going to link her page down below in the description box. And she asked me a question that I thought was one, a fabulous question. And two, I thought was worthy of a little bit more discussion than a couple of minutes answer stuck in the middle of a Q&A. And the question was, if you could flick a switch, would you flick that switch and no longer be interested in luxury? No longer be interested in luxury items? No longer be interested in luxury handbags? No longer be interested in buying any of this crazy that costs so much money, causes us to get a little, well me, to get a little obsessed at times, and can lead to a risk of overspending and of judgment? And I thought that's a fabulous question. But I think there's more to it than just a very quick answer. And I thought I would chat to you guys about it today in the video. I suppose I think why we wonder if we could flick that switch and no longer be interested in luxury is for a number of reasons. And the first obvious one has got to be the money. <laughs> Not cheap. And if you have an interest in luxury items or an interest in luxury handbags and you're in the position to buy them or you put yourself in the position to buy them with debt or whatever, you're going to spend a lot of money on handbags and clothes and shoes that otherwise you would not have spent. There is absolutely no getting around that if you buy regular high street priced handbags from River Island or Next or Primark, wherever, there is no getting around you're going to save a small fortune than if you buy these from Louis Vuitton, from Chanel, from Prada, from Fendi, from Hermes, from any of the fashion houses that produce luxury designer handbags, you're going to save a fortune. The other bags that you buy may not last just as long. The quality and the craftsmanship may not just be the same, but I don't think that they're going to wear out that quickly, that you're gonna to have to buy that many of them that's gonna add up to the price of these. I don't, genuinely don't. So there is the cost. There is also the judgment, and I've talked about this on a few of my videos on this channel, that being interested in luxury items, having an interest in luxury handbags, brings with it a huge amount of judgment. And it's a judgment that I think sometimes people, one, don't really know about or acknowledge or realise how significant it can be and how much judgment there can be. And two, sometimes people don't really understand where it comes from. Now, it took me a while to get there to realise the judgment is because you're choosing to spend huge amounts of money on frivolous material items like a handbag. You're choosing to buy those things with your own money, let's point out, with your own money, rather than save that money or put it into your home or your children or donate it, whatever that may be. So there's a huge judgment comes with that. There's a huge, huge judgment that comes with buying luxury handbags and luxury items that I don't think I realised the extent of until I started going a bit nuts. So there's that. There is also the position you can find yourself in that I was in for quite some time before having you guys really on YouTube, that you have this interest and this addiction <laughs> and this love of buying these things and it almost becomes like a dirty secret and it's almost as if you are ashamed of it or you are scared or you are certainly uncomfortable, self-conscious to talk about it, to show it or for other people to know about it. And I had that for the longest time that when I started buying these bags, I almost wanted to hide them. I used the whole, oh, that's not real or oh, I got that second hand or whatever it may be. There is a feeling that we're doing something almost that needs to be hidden and ashamed of. And that comes with buying these things and loving these things. For me, that came until I got more confident and more comfortable in my own interest and what I liked to buy. And now I don't so much have that. And not that I will throw it in anybody's face and I will not talk to people about it that are not interested in it. I will not bring it up in conversation. I will not talk to my everyday life 
friends and people I come into contact with generally apart from Bestie because they've no interest in it and because the amount of money that I choose to spend on those things wouldn't sit or wouldn't resonate or they would think I was nuts or they wouldn't really understand me spending that sort of money on those things and I never want to do something or to talk about my interest that would make other people feel lesser or worse or feel well anything really plus I don't want the judgment coming back to be quite so honest. there are all of those reasons there is the cost there is the judgment there is the feeling almost of being ashamed and on top of that there's also the FOMO which is the want 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 or the whenever new collections come out the trying to get the latest bag which can be a marathon all by itself trying to get to the top of the list trying to get your Chanel sales associate to give you whichever one of these it is you want trying to get those things following the trends trying to keep up trying to have the next best thing because if you don't have the next newest thing then you're not going to have the next best square on Instagram personally I don't care about that <laughs> not one bit don't really follow trends follow exactly what I like there is a theme back there <laughs> buy what I like buy what I love a lot of the time with my work life my business my children YouTube I don't get the time to be actively posting on Instagram a lot of the time I'm trying to get better so half of them bags haven't even been on Instagram so I, I really don't for me don't care don't care about keeping up with the Joneses don't care about the next best thing don't care about having it in my Instagram square don't care about the FOMO because I am older I suppose than a lot of people that are on social media I'm 40 I am now confident in myself I'm confident in my own likes and choices a lot of those people wouldn't buy that would be too bright too colourful too gaudy whatever I love them so there's not that feeling of keeping up or FOMO but there is if there is a release coming say from Chanel or Louis Vuitton or whatever and I really want one of the bags like I loved the Fendi purple Sex in the City because I am a child of the original Sex in the City era and that bag really meant something to me and I really wanted to be able to get it whenever the this petite male was coming out I really wanted to get it there is a sequenced Chanel in there somewhere that's pretty new I really wanted to be able to get it and yes you it's not about the trend or the FOMO it's about I would love to have that piece and it's trying to get it and locate it and speak to your sales associate and, and get it so there is getting caught up in that and the time and the energy and the I was going to say disappointment if you don't get a bag but you can be disappointed if there's something you really really wanted and you weren't able to get and you miss out on it I suppose that's a bit of FOMO isn't it so there's all of that and then if you're interested in a Birkin or a Kelly which <laughs> if you watch my channel I have unboxed my very first Birkin and I absolutely love her and because I wanted very very specific specifications on a Birkin there was no leeway not one bit, not one iota of a size or a togo or a, a different leather or a different colour, not one bit. I wanted a very specific Birkin 25. That meant for me, rather than playing the Hermes game as it sometimes gets called, rather than buying things just to try and get that or getting offered something that was slightly different, I went down the route of a reseller, I set myself a limit of the cost and I bought the exact specifications of the bag that I wanted. My Hermes wish list is a mini Kelly where I have a bit more leeway on colours with but this one I wanted exactly this shade which is hard with Hermes. So there's that as well that if you want to get a Birkin or a Kelly it can be very very hard to get. It can be I have been on a wish list for a mini Kelly for quite some time. It's It takes a long time, it's a lot of money you don't know if you're getting it you can't walk in and just buy one and be offered one you have to be offered one for a start you can't just buy in walk inside like that and buy it you have to wait you have to be offered one you have to have the store decide that you're getting one and on bags that are popular like the smaller bags that can be very difficult can take a lot of time you may never get one so there is that there's that side of it if you are caught up in this and you really want one of those bags that that can be a trial that can be disappointing or you may just never get it and you have to just accept that and that can be frustrating I suppose so there is that and then there is the flip side of that if you do the route that I went and you just buy the one that you want you're going to pay above retail for it now I didn't buy a brand new one it was in excellent condition but it wasn't brand new it didn't have the little pillow in the box all those things get taken into account with pricing and it didn't it wasn't brand new but it was still above retail so I still paid above retail for that and that meant other choices I made to fund that it's all in the Birkin video if you're interested in that check that one out but 
So you also then have the risk of buying things that you get obsessed with, <laughs> like, you know, as we crazy people do, that you end up paying more than what the retail price for is if you go down that route of trying to source it. There's all those reasons. And I'm guessing whenever Candace came up with this question, she was talking about all those things, all of those things. And if you could just, would you go back and not be interested in luxury? For me, cause I'm nuts. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go and flick that switch. It's part of who I am. And I am very comfortable now, at my age now, not when I was younger. At my age now, I am very comfortable in who I am. I am very comfortable with my interests, with my addictions, <laughs> with my life. I am very comfortable with it. So I wouldn't change it. I have accepted that it's part of who I am. My darling husband has accepted that it's part of who I am. My bank balance has accepted that it's part of who I am. And no, I wouldn't change it. For me, it wasn't a reality or a possibility for a very, very long time because I don't come from money. It took until I have my own business, my own company, till that grew, till that got to a certain uh, stage before I could even start buying these things. And then laterally, whenever I could buy more of them. But I still have to be sensible with my money. I have a whole other channel, Emilio's Talks, where I talk about finance. And I talked about in the Birkin video about finance. So I still have to be careful and make certain choices. But I am comfortable with the fact that this is an interest of mine. I love it. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. These bags, although it blows my husband's brain as to how, make me happy. It makes me happy playing with them, dressing up with them, having them, wearing them, loving them. Getting one of those new bags makes me happy. And I, I am, I suppose, at a position because of where I've come from with my finances that I am sensible enough to only buy what I can comfortably afford. I'm on a spending freeze at the minute. I'm on a no buy a few months because I need to refill up that luxury account. I will not keep shopping. There's a few bags were sold whenever the Birkin came in because I felt uncomfortable with how low that account had got. Your answer may be different. If you are one, not crazy like me, Two, if you aren't in a position financially that you can do this comfortably. Or three, if you're someone that struggles to keep your money separate and struggles to make those decisions that they only gets bought with what you can buy it with. Because for the longest time I didn't buy these or didn't buy very many because I didn't have the financial position to be able to do it. So for me, no, I love them. It makes me happy. My finances are at a stage where these are bought with surplus money. When that surplus money runs out or gets very low like it has now, pause, stop. Doesn't matter what comes, doesn't matter what gets released. Deal was talking to me just the other day about a fantastic bag <laughs> that I would have loved. But I had to say to Deal, I can't, I just can't. I, I can't at the minute because I am on a spending freeze. So I know when to pump the brakes and when to do that. So no, I wouldn't. Also, it gives me, you guys, it gives me this community, this platform to talk about what I love. And I love doing this. I love interacting with you all. I love sharing this. And if I didn't have, if went like that and didn't have this interest anymore, this wouldn't exist. This community that I talk to, these friends that I've made deal, I wouldn't know deal. I wouldn't know the Paris girls. I wouldn't know Connor. There's a whole, I wouldn't know Gwenny. I wouldn't know, Tan there's a whole, Tanya, I wouldn't, there's a whole load of you. Lou, I wouldn't know. Steph, I wouldn't know. There's a whole community of people that I wouldn't know that I now love speaking to love being interacting with. So no, I wouldn't. I, I would not flick that switch. That being said, I 110% understand and appreciate why people may say yes. Because the money you spend, yeah, could be a second mortgage, couldn't it? The time you spend, the disappointment, the trying to get bags, the judgment, the frustrations, I can understand why people would say yes. But for me, it is a no and it's a hard no because I love it. I love this community. I love being involved in this. I These things make me happy. I love shopping. I've always loved shopping, even when I didn't have any money. I've loved shopping, love going on day trips, love going shopping trips. <sighs> no, I wouldn't. But what a fabulous question. Thank you, Candice, for giving this to me. What a fabulous, fabulous video topic. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's given you some food for thought. Please come into the comment box and tell me if you are a luxury lover, would you flick the switch? Would you turn it all off? and no longer be interested in any of it. I would love to know your answers. If you have a YouTube channel, 
tell us, have a video, tell us whether or not you would flick this switch. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.